set the table, and then I'm going to invite uh, Bart Hazelton and Sharon Calvert to come speak as well. First of all, the driving factor behind our presence here today is the supreme level of disappointment in Senator, Ru Senator Rubio's participation in this legislation. It's really, really important to keep in mind that while this particular legislation doesn't have anything directly to do with the IRS, the Justice Department, or NSA, we, the American people, are being asked yet again to trust. And I was just listening into Senator Rubio being interviewed on a radio station. And uh, Senator Rubio said himself, and I'll, I'll quote him, People are rightly distrustful of the government. Yeah. And he went on to say, and so am I, speaking for himself. Well, the federal government has given us and every American more than sufficient reason not to simply take them at their word. This didn't start with Mr. Obama. He's certainly not the only one guilty, but he's the one who's now asking us simply to trust. We don't. Not Mr. Obama, a Democrat, not Mitch McConnell, a Republican, not Harry Reid, a Democrat, not Nancy Pelosi, a Democrat, not John Boehner, a Republican. It doesn't matter. All of those folks have given us ample reason not to trust them. And now on to the issue of enforceable immigration law. Now we seem to not be able to trust Senator Rubio on that point. In the beginning, Back in 2010, we supported Senator Rubio with our time, talent, and treasures as a candidate based on many of his very specific positions on national immig issues, immigration being first and foremost that he campaigned on. He has completely reversed his position. Again, I'll go to the interview that I just listened to. He says that's not true. I beg to differ. He said that he would follow the Constitution in the execution of his duties, and we expect him to do so. And they apply to everyone, including those who want to come to our country legally. We as Tea Party 912 leaders have no illusions about people like John McCain, Mitch McConnell, John Boehner, Republicans, all of them. At this point, there's nothing that surprises us or disappoints us about them. They can't solve problems that we have today because they are part and parcel of the problem. There's absolutely no expectation that the Democrat Party has any answers. So no expectation, no disappointment. We don't expect Chuck Schumer to do anything that's going to actually result in the protection of or the securing of our borders. Yesterday, Senator Rubio's office sent out a piece of correspondence referring to myths facts about the Hoven corker Amendment. First of all, Senator Rubio assured us prior to this amendment that his bill had the strongest enforcement provisions that any legislation ever offered in order to secure sovereign American borders. My question simply is this. If it already had those provisions, why the necessity for an amendment? The legislation that's been offered along with the amendment is simply a a rehash, it's a redo of 1986, the Reagan amnesty bill. We were told then that that would address the problem of illegal immigration. And in fact, what we know to be true is that based on the figures that we were told in 1986 about the number of illegal immigrants, and I, I, I need to make very clear here that what we're talking about is illegal immigration. Anyone who frames our position as being opposed to immigration is an outright liar. We are not opposed to immigration. So there can be no mincing of the words there. We support legal immigration. It is illegal immigration that we are opposed to, just, why, just like we are opposed to anyone who breaks any of our laws. So this is simply a redo of 1986. It's not going to solve the problem. It'll make the problem much, much worse. And what even makes it worse, repeating myself, what makes it really bad is all of the pork that's included in the bill. Right. 
there's a provision in there to provide uh, millions of dollars at Bernie Sanders' behest for some kind of program. I, it has nothing in the world to do with immigration. So I ask everyone, why on earth then would it be included in an immigration bill? Bernie Sanders, I wait for your answer. What this is is a continuation of old-style Washington politics. It is absolutely an insult to the immigrants who have come to this nation, played by the rules, and gotten here legally. I meet them every day in my business. I have this conversation with them every day, and they are as adamantly opposed to this bill, they being legal immigrants, as any of us are. The purpose of the bill should be for this reason and this reason only. Any immigration policy should support our liberty and economic freedom for those who are coming to this nation. Any other purpose doesn't address immigration. And so, our statement to Senator Rubio at this point is very simply this. Stop. Stop, Senator Rubio. We have so many things where you and I and the, the Tea Party and 912 groups are in accord. We are in agreement. This is not one of them. We ask you to stop. This is flawed legislation. Stop. Back away. It can be addressed. It needs to be addressed. This is not the way to do it. I'll close with this. It's terribly disappointing that a person who we placed great trust, confidence, and hope in to follow and enforce existing laws in our Constitution would turn such a blind eye to the Constitution and a deaf ear to us. Thank you. And at this time, I'd like to introduce Barb Hanselton. Barb? No. Thank you, Tim. And um, I uh, applaud Tim's remarks this morning, and, and certainly from Pinellas on the BAP, South Pinellas 912, we agree with those and also wanted to add that in November of 2009, we hosted then candidates, uh, Marco Rubio, <coughs> through um, over in the Clearwater area where we had 350 cheering people that came and listened to his, his, his message of all kinds of issues, but including immigration and closing the borders. And we believed in him and we worked hard for, for him from that point forward, from November of 2009 to the election the, the next year, a full year later. Uh, we, we rolled up our sleeves, we stood on corners, we raised funds, we had fundraisers, we, we did so much work to try to help Senator, then candidate, Rubio become elected because of the promises uh, that he had made to us. And we're here today to hold him accountable uh, for what we think is misguided support of a bill that rewards lawbreakers and fundamentally transforms our country for the worse. We trusted him when he said that he would be our voice. We trusted him when he said he would never support any effort to grant amnesty to folks who have entered or stayed in the country illegally. <laughs> Our trust has been betrayed with Senator Rubio's bill that does not serve our economic or national security interests. Some facts about the bill. According to the CBO, unemployment will rise and wages will lower on the middle class if this bill is passed. Another fact, the bill encourages employers to hire those here illegally over U.S. citizens by creating a $5,000 Obamacare penalty on the backs of legal citizens. The fact, this bill creates immediate amnesty with an empty promise of border security. This structure repeats the mistakes of the 1986 amnesty and incentivizes future illegal entry. In fact, the schumer Coker Haven uh, provides for only single layer fencing instead of the double layer fencing that was required under the Secure Fence Act of 2006. In fact, the bill allows the Secretary of Homeland Security the discretion the Secretary of Homeland Security has the discretion to decide whether and where double-layered fencing is appropriate and leaves open the possibility that no fencing may be built at all after this is passed. As a result, the United States is simply unprepared to deal with the influx of immigrants that will seek to enter this country illegally in pursuit of a path to U.S. citizenship during the two and a half years amnesty period when deportations and enforcements will be virtually halted. In fact, the Gang of AIDS bill would allow illegal immigrants who entered the country before December 31, 2011 and committed up to three misdemeanor offenses, including but not limited to assault, battery, 
identity or document fraud tax evasion to remain eligible for registered provisional status. Meanwhile, U.S. citizens and persons who enter the country legally would incur up to $100,000 in fines, 15 years of imprisonment, or be prohibited to re-enter the country for up to 10 years. Fact. Section 2314B gives the DHS Secretary discretion to waive deportation for any reason the Secretary deems. So in this letter that Senator Rubio sent to the Tea Party, April 16th of this year, 2013, he pledged to not support legislation that has rushed through Congress, does not truly and legitimately secure our borders, or that leads to further illegal immigration in the future. This current bill, current amendment, and the rush to ram the bill through the Senate by week's end violates this letter and all of the public statements and promises that the Senator has made to us in the past. Thank you very much. I'm Sharon Calvert. I'm a co-founder of the Tampa Tea Party, and I appreciate this opportunity to stand with my partners, Tim Curtis and Barb Hazelton, today. I wrote an email to Senator Rubio this, this week, earlier this week, and I understand that it personally did get to him. And I'd like to share with you basically what I said in that email. Honorable Senator Rubio, I wrote to him to request that he please walk away from the Corker Hoven Amendment and the Gang of Eight Immigration Bill. I first heard candidate Marco Rubio speak in the late fall of 2009 at an event here in Tampa. And I was so impressed by his conservatism, his optimism, and his message that America is exceptional and we must remain so. I became an ardent supporter that evening and worked to do my best in 2010 to get him elected. I trusted that he would do the right thing and stand up to Washington's status quo establishment of either party that has created such a mess over the last decades. I understand, I empathized, and I truly believed that Senator Rubio had the best of intentions when he decided to get out in front of and take on the immigration issue. However, today, June 2013, we are in a very different political climate than we were even in after last November's election. We are in the political climate of distrust. Distrust of government and our elected representatives is at its highest. That is not a good sign for any nation. Trust has broken down due to too many broken promises. Look at previous huge comprehensive bills passed, whether it's stimulus, farm bill, Dodd-Frank, Sarbanes-Oxley, Patriot Act, of course Obamacare, and of course the promises of the 1986 amnesty bill and the promise that they would build a fence in 2006. And distrust has risen as a result of the recent scandals and government officials of this administration lying to Americans. Do we want to trust this administration to faithfully enforce a bill to the best interest of all Americans with a bill that few have read. Americans are fatigued with thousand page plus page bills that are rushed through a process that lacks transparency and consists of backroom deals and buy-offs. Very few senators and Americans have had the time to fully read and digest the Court for Hogan 1,200-page amendment that was voted on this week. All senators, all of them, whether they support this bill or not, should be, at the very least, know exactly what they are voting on. And all Americans also deserve the time to read and digest this bill as well. Exactly. The senators are not voting on five broad talking points but a huge complex bill. The devil is in the details. And now I understand this bill includes pork, payoffs to special interest, conflicting statements, and will increase unemployment and decrease wages. But worst of all, I don't believe this bill resolves the issue 
how they look, how they illegals. Trust is earned. And when it's lost, it can be very win back. I believed Senator Rubio in 2010 when he said, quote, we've got to secure the borders in our existing system first before we can even begin to have a conversation about the other elements of immigration. And he also said, quote, earned path to citizenship is basically code for amnesty. Most Americans, I believe, are appalled and find it unacceptable that 12 years after 9-11, we still have not secured our borders. If Senators Schumer, Durbin, and Reid were serious about securing our borders, they would not have dropped, stopped building the fence and they would help pass a border security bill separate from the immigration issue. I do not believe that the face of the future Republican Party is Senators McCain and Graham. But I do believe that this issue is splitting the Republican Party and could cause irreparable damage if the conservative base pulls away. Senator Rubio has a great appealing message that can win hearts and minds of many Americans, or all Americans. I believe he can be a champion for conservative principles without pandering to any segment or ethnicity. Remember, when government gives something to one group, they must take something from someone else. So I ask Senator Rubio to please reconsider his position and walk away from the Gang of Eight bill. We need to secure our borders first, and then we can address immigration in a transparent, piece-by-piece -piece manner. I am praying, and I think many Americans are as well, that he will do the right thing, and he will walk away from this bill and secure our borders first. Thank you. Entertain questions. Kill the bill. There you go. <laughs> yes. I'd like to just ask you or Sharon uh, or Barbara or any of you to comment on what this uh, how, the, how this issue affects the possibility hey, of your one for president. I'm going to speak for me. Mr. March, thank you for the question, and for those who didn't hear the question, how does this affect uh, Senator Rubio's potential for running, I, I guess you're asking from our perspective, for him running for, for president. Uh, I said before, Senator Rubio and our principles and values line up on many, many things. This is a pivotal issue. This has specifically to do with the enforcement of law. There are laws on the books. One of the other myths of, that exist, and Senator Rubio said it in his interview, he said, if we do nothing, he says, this will remain in, in place if we do nothing. And that's not true. Because if we would enforce the law, if we would secure the border, if we would abide by the, abide by the existing law, we would have continued to build the fence, and the problem would be greatly mitigated. So, having said that, I'll address your question. We believe that Senator Rubio, we hope that Senator Rubio is going to do the right thing. He has said many times that if the bill doesn't meet certain requirements, that he will walk away. We believe that by speaking out and speaking forcefully, that he'll see that this is a very, very flawed piece of legislation. We can address this issue, as Sharon pointed out, again, and we can do it in a step-by-step -step process. So, our hope is that because Senator Rubio has agreement with us on so many other things, that he'll be able to enjoy our support if and when he runs for the presidential nomination in the future. But if he doesn't, if he votes for the bill, what does that mean for you? Uh, well, when that happens, ask me that question again. <laughs> and, William, I'd like to just also say that uh, speaking from the Pinella side of, of the bay, and, and I think this is true across the state of Florida, is that the Tea Party were the boots on the ground. 
we were the people who went out and knocked on the doors and held the fundraisers and did the telephone work and uh, you know we were we were we were the army that helped him to get elected and to beat all odds coming from, and to beat the establishment and coming from about 40 percent difference between between him and uh, uh, Governor Chris at that point and to come to where he won uh, that was a Tea Party win and uh, so if he loses this base which he's on the on the edge here and we're trying to pull him back we are trying to pull him back so I think it's it's about and I I was at his office in Washington DC a week ago today I was in this office two days ago we are trying our best to reach out our hand and to pull him back from the edge and, and I agree with that and, and I do believe that it will it could impact him in the future if he doesn't walk away and I think what we've pointed out here it's flawed legislation and basically Americans are tired of flawed le legislation because the end result is a disaster. Right. If anybody watched uh, the, the floor of the Senate yesterday and watched Ted Cruz's present the tie of Obamacare with this bill, it's <laughs> devastating. Yes. We are still in an economy that's uncertain. We still have high employment. Um, so we are hoping that all the flaws of this bill, that Senator Rubio will understand that and he will say, you know what? We need to step back. Let's step back and we can start over. Thank you. Anyone else? Yeah, where does this fictitious number of 11 million come from? Where the sun don't shine? Right, well. <laughs> I get a feeling it's 25 to 30 million. The, the number's nebulous, but it doesn't matter whether it's How three or 30. How are proving that number? Yeah. Oh, where is the proof of that number? Right, it's a good question. Thank you all so much for being here today. We appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you.